Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I'm excited about today's word. I'm always excited about the word. Um, in fact, you can put me anywhere on the planet, and as long as I've got a Bible in my hand, I'll be happy. Praise God. So, about three weeks ago, um, started, well, I didn't know it was a series. I, I mean, God never does that with me. He just gives me, you know, a menu <laughs> that uh, I've got to put together to feed his people. And of course, he knows exactly what you need to hear in order for you to get fed. And uh, the first one was, your kingdom come. Remember, the disciples said to Jesus, how do we pray? And, you know, he says, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I don't, after introducing the Father, the first thing Jesus does is he says, you pray for the kingdom to come so that God's will can be done. So we examined that. And then it was Valentine's Day. And we looked at the kingdom of love because that's how, that's the very environment that the kingdom is operating in. And then last week, we flipped the coin, and it was the kingdom of violence. You know, I want you to really hear all of them, because they, they're all very credible. Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed or controlled in the Greek by the devil. And what he kept repeating wherever he went is he wanted people to see that there is a kingdom where he rules and reigns and that it's come. And, uh, and to, for us to keep focused on that kingdom, just because Jesus d died and is resurrected and is ascended and seated at the right hand of God, he established the kingdom here on earth. Amen. That's why he keeps reminding us that when we pray, we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I mean, they're synonymous with each other. But then he says something. Straight after that, he says, give us this day our daily bread. So today's message is the kingdom of provision. See, in God's kingdom, there is a king who rules and reigns. But we are praying to the Father who is in heaven, hallowed be his name. We're asking for the kingdom to come that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then we're praying that he gives us our daily bread that he makes, he gives us our, or meets our needs, our basic needs, but this is important. You know, if Jesus mentions it, for me, that's important enough to study it. So I want to encourage you today and, and tell you that God, as a father, has the a duty, an obligation to you as his child to provide for you. Right through scripture, any mention of fathers, and we see that fathers have a responsibility and a, a duty, but they also have responsibility um, for their family, and that is to provide for the family. So when Jesus introduced the Father, he had that in mind. We'll see 
right through the, the, that whole passage in Matthew, and of course Valentine read uh, from chapter 6, um, where Jesus says, listen, guys, stop worrying about what you're going to eat or drink. Look at the, the flowers of the field, the birds of the air. Look how God cares for them. And he loves you more than he loves them. You're his child. And he has an obligation, a duty as father to meet your needs. Now, if we were kingdom conscious, and I think this is what these you know, last few weeks is, is doing for us, because Jesus wanted, though his followers, to be kingdom conscious, be aware that of the kingdom, no matter where we are, what we're doing, if we are, you know, if we've received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour, we are in the kingdom. And if we are part of the kingdom and in the kingdom, we're not citizens of the earth anymore. We are citizens of heaven. But in that kingdom, there are rules and regulations. And in that kingdom, we have a promise from the Father that everyone that is part of that kingdom will have their needs met. Amen. I'm going to show this in Scripture today. And if we had revelation of that, we wouldn't worry. So I'm talking to all of you warriors, not with an A, with an O. Warriors. You know, there's a lot of Eeyores in the uh, body of Christ. You, you, you meet them, all you hear is, oh, no, 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 It's all nice, you know, no, no. If you are fully conscious of what's going on around you in God's kingdom, you will be encouraged all the time. Hallelujah. Now, we get a double whammy, because not only do we have a father who, as I said, has a duty and an obligation to meet our needs, we also have a husband, Jesus, because we are his church, his bride, and Again, right through Scripture, the husband has a duty and a responsibility to care for and meet the needs of his wife. I mean, in 1 Timothy 6 verse 8, it basically says if you don't, you're worse than an unbeliever. So imagine we've got the father and we've got a husband who is fully committed and obligated to meet our needs. Wow. So why are you worrying? What's the problem? And the problem is we don't have, we're not kingdom-minded. When we're kingdom-minded, we go, hey, I've got a dad who's <laughs> going to meet my need. Any of you that have had children, and especially as they grow, your child doesn't for one minute think, I wonder how my dad is going to fill my fridge. No. You walk in, you open the fridge, you just empty it, and you just carry on. <laughs> that's, that's the rule. Why? Because instinctively a child knows that the parent has an obligation to care and to feed. So today we're going to have deeper insight into what it means to give us this day our daily bread. 
Living in God's kingdom means trusting that God will provide. Amen. Being thankful when he does provide. Yes, Lord. And being satisfied with his provision. Because, yeah, yeah, you know, people, they pray and they, God gives them and then they're not happy. They just want... Uh, uh, don't look at someone else's slice. Uh, a lot of us eat and we, we got our plate and God's given us something and we're looking in someone else's plate. Why did they get a bigger piece of steak than I did? God knows what you need. Amen? Amen? And just be satisfied with that. He loves us as a father, and he loves us more than the birds of the air and the, and the lilies of the field. And therefore he is committed, fully committed, to providing for our daily needs. So our basic needs, this is where we start, are covered. I've just proved that to you. So worrying about what you're going to eat and what you're going to drink and what you're going to wear and whether you have a roof over your head, that's a no-brainer. If you're kingdom-minded, you know that your heavenly father and, and your husband is going to take care of that. Done deal. That does not require faith. Don't have to get all built up in faith and say, oh, God's going to put bread on my table today. No. You just accept the truth that your heavenly Father has an obligation to, because he's received you into his family. You're an adopted child. He takes on that responsibility. And when, when you're joined with Jesus, he takes on the responsibility as well. So you don't need faith for that. It's what you accept. So all the energy that you spend worrying about your basic needs, when you could have put that energy into up and above. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Yeah, because God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you may ask or think or imagine. That's where your faith is. Not for your base, basic needs. And the, the scripture that we're going to focus on today is Philippians 4, verse 19. And it says this, And God shall supply all our need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, does that leave out a need? It says all. Which begs the question, where are the riches in glory? If God's going to supply all my need according to his riches in glory, where are his riches in glory? Hmm. Well, it's the place where Christ rules and reigns. In his kingdom! Amen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The original Greek of Philippians 4.19 says, My God will fill up all your needs according to the riches of him in glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. So let's just look at a couple. Of, well, there's one, two, three, four, five words there in the Greek which just like blow your mind when you look at what exactly this is saying. <coughs> My God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So the first word is uh, blerosi, which is translated supply. It literally means to make full or to fill up completely. Now some translators say to fill to the full. But it's not exactly to fill to the full. It's to make full and to 
fill up completely. But it implies to fill to individual capacity. And to extent, sorry, uh, to the extent that it is fully supplied and satisfied. So, it's to make full or to fill up completely, but to fill to individual capacity. We all have different capacities. And that's why I, I've said don't worry if someone is getting a bigger measure, it's because your capacity hasn't got there yet. Hello? Amen. And it says, to the extent that it is fully supplied and satisfied. Oh, there's a word, kortazo, in the Greek, which is, you know, like, you've eaten so much, you're like, oh, am I satisfied? But this word, glerosi, in the modern Greek, means to pay in full. I mean, it's just like mind-blowing. My God shall supply, make full, fill to capacity to the extent that you're completely satisfied and pay it up in full. And if I went to a shop and uh, I bought something and then I came home uh, and Pastor Lorraine said to me, well, you know, what did you get? I said, and then I would say to her, Eplerosa, I paid it. There's that word. I paid it up completely. I bought it. Wow. And that's just that one word translated, my God will fill up or supply. The next word is all. It's the word pasa, which is translated all in the sense of each and every part. This is a, another thing, is it's not all, it's each and every part that gets this full measure. Amen. So in your life, it's not, oh, your life does it. No, no, it's each and every part of your life is getting a full and complete and fully satisfied and supplied measure. Amen. Each and every part. And the emphasis is on the total picture, one piece at a time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's supplying, blessing you, filling you, with each and every part, one piece at a time. Then the next word is needs. It's chian, uh, which is translated need, also means business. It refers to everything that is absolutely necessary for life and can be applied to things that are needed for sustenance on a long journey. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's not just, oh my knee. No, it's, it's everything on this journey. Praise God. And it's every individual thing as well. And it's, then, then this word, according to, which is translated, it's the word kata, uh, which uh, is literally by way of. According to, by way of, and you know what that is? It's a day-to-day -day occurrence. It's not a one, oh, well, God supplies your need today, but then tomorrow you're in trouble. No, 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 this goes on and on and on and on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think God deserves a, a bit of praise for that. Amen. Amen. Then finally, it's the word blutos, 
which is where we get the, the word um, uh, um, translated wealth, pelusios, and it's translated riches, but it also means wealth, abundance of belongings, or possessions of many kinds. The root word is blio, which is literally to abound, and is used when referring to material affluence. So it's not as, it can be applied to spiritual matters, but most of the time it's material. So he's going to supply all your need according to his riches, his wealth, his abundance of belongings, or possessions of any kind. And as I said, in glory in Christ Jesus. So, where the king rules, where the king reigns, that's where all the provision is. In the kingdom! Hallelujah! Amen. So from these words, I just noticed that this is saying quarter to four. <laughs> <laughs> so from these words we can clearly see that God wants to fill to individual capacity our each and every need, one piece at a time and day by day. Yes. By way of the limitless wealth and the abundant possessions of him who rules and reigns in glory, yes. Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Man, if you're not happy, you should be happy. I've just shown you what the heart of God is. As citizens of the kingdom of God, we have the Almighty as our supreme provider. One of the names of God is Jehovah Jireh. He who provides, or he will provide. The Lord, your provider, gives you all that you need. We've just seen that. Now here's another controversial scripture because uh, a lot of people just wish it wasn't there. Proverbs 10 verse 22 tells us, The blessings of the Lord make one poor. Oh, um, oh the blessings of the Lord make one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Now, oh, but pastor, that word rich in the Hebrew, oh, what does that word rich in the Hebrew mean? I'll, I'm glad you asked. Because it's just like the Greek word. The Hebrew word ashar, translated rich, is to gain wealth and refers to an abundance of crops or goods. Therefore, remember, this was a society that lived off their crops. So it's abundance of crops or goods, therefore it, lit it is literally to grow rich. The blessings of the Lord make you grow rich. Amen. <laughs> God's blessings make you grow rich. Just as a farmer grows crops, God's blessings enable you to cultivate wealth. Oh, but Pastor, I didn't come to church to hear about the prosperity message. Well, I don't know what Bible you're reading. It, no matter who tells you this, it's a lie. Jesus became poor that we may become rich. There's that word, blusios, again. There's nowhere in the Bible that says it's more spiritual to be poor than to be rich. No. Oh, but uh, a rich man can't enter the kingdom of heaven. 
I know, you should read that, because straight after that it says, but nothing is impossible with God. Yeah. Immediately after that. Amen. See, we just stop it where we like it. No. The reason why, now if you're kingdom-minded, the reason why you've got to understand in the kingdom, everyone needs to have an abundance. Because the kingdom is about abundance. Otherwise, it's a mockery. God's will be done in heaven as it is on earth. In heaven, I mean, the streets are lined with gold. No, no, but you come down here, and the kingdom here is weeds and... No. The same environment as it is in heaven, let it be here on earth. Just we're not kingdom-minded. There are at least 169 verses in the Bible that refer to the ways God provides for us. Wow. Like any parent, God wants to give us good gifts. He would never give us what he knows would harm us. Our Heavenly Father doesn't want us to suffer lack or live in poverty. In his kingdom is contained the abundant riches of his glory. However, there's always a condition, and it's a good one. There's one condition to accessing all provision that God has for you. Matthew 6, verse 33. Now remember... We've just heard this eloquently delivered by, by Valentine. God's talking about us worrying about our basic necessities. And then it talks about the unbeliever. But, you know, that's what they seek. You know, they want all their needs met. They want, that, and, you know, they want things. Talks in the Greek, things. And then he says this. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. All these things, verse 32. Sorry, verse, uh, the verse before that is talking about the, uh, the unbeliever, and it says, all these things that you need. Therefore, by prioritizing the kingdom of God, giving it first place, all these things, everything that you need will be added to your life. See, this is kingdom stuff here. Jesus is saying, when you focus on the kingdom, when you make it, it's the word protos, first, put it first in your life, and his righteousness, all these things. There's a Greek word, after. Oh, I don't know what you're worrying about. I mean, these things, they're nothing for God. They'll be added to your life. So the key that unlocks all the things that we were, God will supply all your needs, all the things, according to his riches and glory in his kingdom, is you've got to actually prioritize his kingdom. See how it all works out. By prioritizing the kingdom of God, giving it first place, all the things you need will be added to your life. It's like getting a bonus every time you place the kingdom of God first. Yeah. Imagine if you could see the bonus points. The moment you put it first, bonus. Notice, it does not say you, you can't seek anything else. It says you must seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. It says arrange your life so that the kingdom is at the top of every action list. Number one, protos, in front. That's how you're guaranteed that all these things will be added. 
that we've just looked at in Philippians. That's how you access the riches of his glory. And just to round everything off, remember, this is what we, we read when we, we looked at this passage in, uh, in Philippians 4 verse 19. God wants to fill you to your maximum capacity. Amen. He wants to meet your each, each and every need one piece at a time, day by day. Amen. By way of the limitless wealth and the abundant possessions of him who rules and reigns in glory, Amen. our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Isn't that truly astounding? What an awesome God we serve. Yes. And the key that unlocks it is being kingdom-minded putting the kingdom of God and his righteousness at the top of every list. In this day and age when we are living in the midst of unthinkable, you know, challenges, it is so encouraging to be reminded of God's goodness and faithfulness. Jehovah Jireh is an embodiment of love and provision. How can anyone not love this amazing God? There's such an attack on Christianity. Now you can't be a, a Christian in business, in politics, and you know, you're just getting sh shot down. I mean, in schools, and universities. Universities are going to try and take away the Christian holidays. They don't refer it to Easter break. I mean, this is weird stuff. But it's backfiring in Scotland at the moment because uh, that, uh, that MP that, uh, you know, just, just dug in and said, hey, I'm a Christian. They just tried everything. She's got more publicity than she would ever have got. And now She's way ahead on the polls. Amen. Praise God. Keep praying for her. Amen. Amen. And really, politicians that are anti-Christian, next time there's a, you know, an election or that, they should be removed. Because the majority of the people don't want that. They are trying to force all these woke ideas uh, on people and they are a tiny minority with a big voice. Exactly what the devil is. Yeah. I'm not saying they are devilish. I'm just saying that's how he operates. Yeah. You know, small, because the Bible tells us that one day we're going to see him and go, was that really you? Big amplified stuff. And we cannot, this is why being kingdom minded means we just say, Hey, these are the rules in the kingdom of God. I'm going to stay with them. And we can just keep praising God for his goodness and his mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. More than ever now, the church must stand up and be counted. Amen. And look what happens. That things turn around. Because at the end of the day, the power is with God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How can anyone not fall in love with such an amazing God? Who is so steadfast and so faithful. Who never takes his eyes off his children. Not even for a moment. Do you know that God's just, wherever you are, he's going, that's my daughter, that's my son. Wow. Amen. And that love he has for you. Just overwhelming. Therefore, let us make a commitment to ourselves today that no matter what we may be going through, we will never cease to give him praise. Amen. And thank him for all his abundant blessings yes. and limitless provision. For he is worthy to be praised.
Amen. Now, you don't have to do this physically, but in the spirit, you should always be in that position, on your knees, submitted, but praising. Hallelujah. That's the life. And in the kingdom of God, that's where the blessings are. So the more kingdom-minded we are. Last week we saw that the kingdom of God is taken by forceful and violence. So there's a determination there. And the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Hallelujah. But at the same time, we walk in love. Amen. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. And that's why whatever's going on, no matter how devilish it looks, it's the devil behind it. <laughs> Amen. It's not the people. So we have authority in the spirit. And we can change things as long as we don't muzzle ourselves. Do you know that people say, oh, well, the devil muzzled him and the this and this. No, 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 you muzzled yourself by not speaking it out. The moment you speak it out, there's authority in God's word. He watches over his word to perform it. He never retracts his word. Speak it out. So I just thank you, Lord, for the victory. Amen. Amen. You died on the cross for me. You shed your blood for me. I am not going to accept anything less. And you said that you will provide, you will, you know, every single need you will supply. Because every single need is already there in your kingdom. Provision is there. You say, well, this, it's all material. No, no, no. It's, it's, if you've got pain in your body, you've got sickness in your body, you know, you, you're depressed, you're... God's interested in your whole well-being. I pray above all else that you may prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Yes. Amen. It's holistic. So in the kingdom, the blessings are not just material. We focus on material because they're more visible, <laughs> but not because they're more important. But it's just as important that you realize that when you're in the kingdom, that the blessings of God in the kingdom are going to make you rich spiritually, materially, and physically. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you up for that? Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. <laughs> Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Because my God will supply all your needs. I love the, you know, the Bible's always about all, not some. According to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So we love you. You're going to have a great week because you're going to be more kingdom minded. Amen. 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 I pray the Holy Spirit just rattles you a little when you're sitting at home complaining or saying and this, just say, wait, oh, sorry, you're not in the kingdom then. Jesus said, no, no, the unbeliever does all of that, worries about stuff. You go, no, 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 I'm in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm in God's kingdom. Therefore, I'm secure by, you know, I, I can trust in him, in his faithfulness, but then I can put my faith out for exceedingly abundantly above all that I may ask, think, or imagine. Glory to God. Are you going to do that? Yes. You're going to make a commitment to yourself that this week you're going to receive more than you've ever received. Amen. Because you're in the kingdom. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God.